All right, now that you know all about dingly danglies that dangle off the dongle, how did they get on the dongle to begin with? Well, there's two kinds of chemical reactions that can put a dingly dangly on the dongle. We're going to focus on how do you get a halide onto the dongle. There are two reactions you can use. If the hydrocarbon is saturated, which means all the bonds are single bonds, the molecule is saturated with hydrogen, in other words, an alkane, then you can undergo what's called a substitution reaction. What happens here is one of the hydrocarbons' hydrogens are removed, and usually it's one of the end hydrogens because it's the easiest to get to, and replaced with an atom of a halogen. And what happens is the hydrogen and the other halogen is left over as a byproduct. So if I take this molecule here, C5H12, this is pentane, and I react it with chlorine, Cl2, what's going to happen is the chlorine, why is it Cl2? Oh, because remember, chlorine is diatomic, Brinkelhoff. Ah, okay. So the chlorines break up, and one of the chlorines, whoop, takes the place of a hydrogen. That's substitution. It's kind of like when your teacher isn't at school and a substitute comes in to take their place. Ah. So one of the hydrogens is removed and one of the chlorines takes its place. C5H12 becomes C5H11 and one of the chlorines takes a hydrogen's place. And what's left over? That hydrogen and the other chlorine. Now you can continue this reaction and the other chlorine can replace another hydrogen. Does it always have to replace the end hydrogen? No, but that's the most common isomer you're going to get. Alright, what if instead of reacting with Cl2, we reacted with hydrogen chloride? Well, the same thing will happen. The chlorine will come over and replace the end hydrogen. Like so. And we'll get C5H11 and the chlorine will come in and take the hydrogen's place and the hydrogen that was removed will bond with that hydrogen to form H2. Look, there it is. So that's substitution, where you substitute one atom for another. Have you ever heard of saturated fats? Those are long hydrocarbon molecules that have no double bonds in them. They're all single bonds, saturated fats. You ever heard of, have you ever heard of unsaturated fats? They have double or triple bonds in them. You ever heard of a polyunsaturated fat? That means there's multiple double or triple bonds in the molecule. What about monounsaturated fat? That would have one double bond in it. And then you could have a cis or trans fatty acid, but that goes a little bit beyond this course. If it's an unsaturated hydrocarbon, in other words, there aren't as many hydrogens as there could theoretically be, an alkene or an alkyne, what happens then is what's called an addition reaction. Here, we have a weak spot in the molecule. The double bond is stronger than a single bond, but each of the two bonds taken in turn are weaker than a single bond. Like, let's say that this bond has a strength of 1.0, and these two bonds have a strength of 1.6, which means each is 0.8. That means when a chlorine comes in, it's going to say, well, what's it easier for me to do? Replace a hydrogen and break that bond, or break the double bond? Now, you remember how it goes. Nature will do whatever it takes the least amount of energy to do. Nature is lazy. So, when chlorine comes in, the double bond breaks. Now, when the double bond breaks, that creates additional places that these carbons can form bonds. And so the chlorines bond to either side of where the double bond was. By breaking the double bond, we open up two new places next to each other for the chlorines to bond. So if you want to make a molecule that has chlorines next to each other, addition is the way to go. If you want to put chlorine on the end of the molecule, then substitution is the way to go. So we started off with C5H10, we added Cl2 to it, 
the double bond broken, did we remove any hydrogens? Nope, we just replaced a double bond. So the number of hydrogens remains intact. C5H10, and we just added these two chlorines to the molecule. That's why it's called addition. We could do the same thing here. If we have HCl, in order to add those to the molecule, the double bond will break, giving two more places where the carbons can form bonds. And there are the two bonds. The hydrogen will bond at one, the chlorine will bond at the other. So now we react it with HCl, we had ten hydrogens, we added one to it. We went from H10 to H11. And we went from having no chlorines to having one chlorine. And notice there's nothing else given off. We're not substituting, we're adding. So to sum this up, if you want to put the halogen atoms on either end of the molecule, use a substitution reaction. Yank the hydrogen off the end and put the halogen in its place. If you want to put the halogen atoms on carbons that are next to each other, use an addition reaction. Grammar! Break a double bond and the halogens will attach to the molecule on either side of where that double bond was. If we want to make one chlorobutane, that's putting it on the end. We need substitution. We needed chlorine and butane. If we want to make 2,3-difluorobutane, we want to put two fluorines next to each other. That's addition. So we needed fluorine and but, but what? Ene. We had to break a double bond. To put them next to each other, on the second and third carbons, second and third carbons, that's where the double bond was originally. So which butene do we need? Two butene. If I wanted to make one two difluorobutane, one two difluorobutane, I would have needed one butene to get the job done. When you take college organic chemistry, a huge amount of it is, here's the product we want to make. Now, what reactants do we need to make it? In college organic chemistry, usually you've got multiple steps. So just break it down. How do you make each step? How can you get that particular atom onto the molecule? In high school chem, this is as far as we have to go.